Hey everybody, welcome to episode 2 in your Chia blockchain tutorial series. So this video we are going to get Chia installed and running on our local computer. So the very first thing is to download Chia. So from Chia.net, visit the download page and get the operating system that you'll be running. Now I'm on a Mac, an M1 Mac, so that is Mac OS Apple Silicon. And then go through the installation process, shouldn't be too bad. So when you open Chia, it's going to look something like this. I've been using this for a while, so I already have a few wallets on here. A fresh install will look a little bit more like this, which I'll show you from a virtual machine, where you have the option to choose wallet mode or farming mode. We are going to want to go with farming mode, but it's not a big deal because you can change it later in settings, but let's go ahead and choose farming mode. And from here, it's going to start up and it'll give you the option to create a new private key. So when you do this, you are essentially creating one of these on this list I have here. And to do this, you will be given 24 words which are supposed to be kept secret. Consider the 24 words to be your proof of ownership of this wallet, so you don't want to give those out. If you give those out, someone can get in your account and take any of the funds you have. So I personally would recommend writing them down on a piece of paper, and an important note is that the order does matter, so you want to have them in this exact order, and then go ahead and hit next. And there you go, you are now in your wallet and the first thing you should notice is that this says syncing. Now if I go over to my existing wallet, it says synced. And that's because I've had this software open for a little while. The node will go through a syncing process where it downloads the entire history of the blockchain. And this is very important to understand. Any transactions are added to the most recent block in this chain of blocks. So for your node to see the latest transactions, it has to be fully synced. This can take some time, so be patient. And this is important because if you're waiting to see the latest transactions that you've sent or received, you will need to be synced past that point for your node to even know that they exist. So the easiest way to get Chia is to use the faucet from Chia.net. So you can paste your wallet address in here and they will send you a little bit of Chia to start working with the Chia blockchain. So to do that, you'll hit receive in your wallet. This will give you your address, which you can copy and you can go over here and paste it. Select I'm not a robot and hit submit. It'll put it in the queue and it will be processed in the order it was received. Now, if you go over and you immediately check your summary, you might not see that transaction if you're not synced. And that is a common misunderstanding. You'll need your wallet to be synced in order to see that Chia in your wallet. Just because it's not showing up doesn't mean it's not necessarily there. It just hasn't been seen yet. To get an overview of the progress of this synced status, you can go over to full node and this will tell you the status, the peak height, which is the most recent block. And if you're syncing, it should give you a status of how far you are synced. You can see over on my other install, it'll say the exact number we are synced to. So receiving Chia, such as through the faucet, is one way of receiving Chia. The other way is to win Chia through farming. As a reminder, this is when you set aside a certain amount of space on your hard drive as a contribution to the network. You can't use that space for anything else except to win Chia. And this is done through what are known as plot files. So you create a plot file, which just looks like any other file on your computer, and then you just make sure you have that selected in the node software and it'll automatically farm for you. The next video will be dedicated to creating plots, but just as a quick preview, you can go over to the plots tab to create your first plot. So from here, you can add a plot and go through all these settings and create. Now, as an important note before you start experimenting too much with plotting, creating a plot does take a lot of writes on your hard drive or SSD. Not really a problem with hard drives, but SSDs do not have unlimited endurance. So if you're planning on creating a ton of plots or you're working on a vitally important SSD, it'd be worth considering getting a dedicated SSD or hard drive to do your plotting. As you'll see in steps four and five here, there's a temp directory, which is where the ton of writes happen. And then there's a final directory, which just writes the final plot. These can be the same location or can be two completely different drives. So say in your temporary location, you use an SSD and an HDD for your destination. This is probably the most common setup, but a lot of people have been using the same destination drive as the temporary drive as well. And even if this is just an old school hard drive, 
it can still work very well as a temporary drive. The only difference is that it might take a little bit longer, but then you don't have to worry about the endurance issues that SSDs have. Now, I'm no expert in SSDs or hard drives, but I just wanted to call that out here. So do any additional research that you feel you need to do, but you're probably fine to make a few plots on your main PC without experiencing any issues. You can read more about the total writes required for a plot here in this documentation. And most SSDs will have a TBW rating, which is usually their minimum guarantee on how many writes the SSD can support. It could do more, but that's kind of like the minimum. So if you're taking a look at your SSD, that TBW is something you might want to look into. So let's take a moment to talk about how transactions are added to the blockchain. We talked about this a little bit that it's added to the most recent block, but the thing to know is that every time a new block is created, there is a block reward. This is where new Chia comes into existence. Where does that Chia go? Well, it is given to the farmer that confirms that block and the more plots you have, the higher chance of you being that farmer. Right now, the block reward is two Chia. This will be halved every three years for the first 12 years. Another way you can think about this is total Chia distributed every 10 minutes. Right now, that value is 64. And over the first 12 years, the farming rewards will be halved at the end of each third year. From year 13 to infinity, the reward will remain constant at 4 Chia every 10 minutes, leading to ever-decreasing inflation rates. Chia's inflation falls through the 0.50% rate 22 years after mainnet launch. So in other words, the amount of Chia in circulation will continually go up, but at a constant rate of 4 Chia every 10 minutes, so the inflation rate percentage goes down over time. Now this 64 Chia that's given out is split across everybody who is farming. Now you can get an estimated time to win, which is basically how much space you're giving up compared to everybody else. How long will it take you to win a block? Here it says estimated 22 years. What many people will do is they will collect a lot of plots using external large capacity hard drives, such as 12 terabyte hard drives. So it's not uncommon to have thousands of plots farming at once. Even with that many plots, it could still take a really long time to win. So that's where the pooling protocol comes in. So when you create a plot, you'll be given the option to join a pool or you can do it from the pooling tab. And here you can see I have six plots associated with a pool here. So that's your quick overview, lots of stuff. So what we're gonna do in the next video is talk about how to create plots, everything you need to know about that. And yeah, it should be pretty exciting. So stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you there.